Hello, everyone. Welcome to Manage the Wild podcast. Um, some news for you. Grizzly bears seen in eastern Montana in the Missouri Breaks area. What's interesting about this is they haven't been seen in this area for well over 100 years. And the other thing that's interesting about this is the Missouri Breaks area, that habitat, descends all the way into North Dakota. And so there is a possibility that if this male, it's believed to be a male, is in that area and stays in that area, it could venture as far as North Dakota. So we are seeing the movement of grizzly bears as they are growing and expanding in population and moving into new territory, which is kind of cool. If you're a rancher, And somebody who likes to hike alone, maybe not so cool. So when you are out in the wild, make sure you're aware there are bears and other predators. I was having a conversation the other day, um, told some people I was kind of thinking about jumping back into wildlife, especially since I've been working with wildlife this winter. Kind of got that bug again, kind of wanted to jump back into it. And I was talking to a kid and he said he wanted to be a biologist really bad because he wanted to work with wildlife like that was his thing and i I, I, there's two types two ways that i can go with this oftentimes i'm the debbie downer so if somebody says they want to work with wildlife they want to be a wildlife biologist i'll let them know the uncomfortable part is the majority of the time they're going to spend talking with people or um you could go the opposite and be like, yeah, it's amazing. You're going to have so much fun. You're going to be doing helicopter captures, darting animals out there, spotting and classifying and doing all those things. But the reality is you're not, your job is so much more diverse. So today uh, out on the feed row uh, in the area that I'm at, we're getting ready to trap elk and so we're getting the trap facility ready. We started to trap last week before Christmas, and we had some water issues, so we had to let the elk go. We've now resolved that. Um, myself, a biologist, and a couple of specialists went out yesterday, and we chopped 50 yards of ice. Couldn't get the tractor into the ditch, and that's how we water these elk, so we had to use axes, picks, and shovels, and chop uh, 50 yards of ditch to open it up to get the water flowing. It was eight degrees. We were soaked and frozen all at the same time. And that is what a biologist does. Something random that you don't think of, but they're still involved in. Today, he went back, and I volunteered to go back Uh, because I knew he was probably going to have to chop some more ice. And sure enough, we did. All the culverts going underneath all the roads where the water exits were froze up. So we had to go and chop ice, open all those up, because we were starting to flood uh, other areas. And so that was a concern that we were going to flood out the entire meadow with this uh, water that we had turned loose. So we went and chopped ice all day. Okay, we got done chopping ice. And the biologist said, hey, I was noticing some spots in the trap, so we need to go add more netting and areas, uh, more netting to those areas within the trap to protect the elk. Because what the elk like to do is they get to these big panels and they'll stick their heads through and they have the potential to break their neck. But we are concerned about the welfare of these wildlife. We want to take their blood sample, and then we want them to be released and go on about their merry way. So we then spent another four hours putting up netting, putting up tarps for the elk to make sure they are protected in those trap facilities. Also, I went with the biologist today. He had boots on. He hopped across a river and grabbed a collar off a 10-and-a-half-year-old doe. Um... When he got on scene, the bones had been scattered just a little bit. The carcass had been picked clean. It was uh, unable to tell why it died. Um, He did notice that it was earlier in the season kind of dragging its back end. And so it could have just died from injuries and being taken down by coyotes. Coyotes had definitely been in the area. Bald eagles were there. All the scavengers were there. And so who knows why it died. But that is kind of what it's like to work in wildlife. 
One minute you're on a tractor feeding elk, the next you're setting turkey traps trying to catch turkeys. You're moving elk to different areas uh, within your trap facility. You're going and releasing a doe that's caught in a fence. You're going and picking a collar up that's in the mountains. You're darting a moose that has come into town. You're then going to a meeting where people are concerned about the populations, the ups and the downs. And so that is really what working in wildlife is like is like it's just always challenging never great so um the other thing that i kind of wanted to touch on today is uh the data that was put out by um on instagram wildlife professor randy larson they've got the final estimates for uh survival Oh, let's see if I can find it. All right. So for the state of Utah, they had done a bunch of fawn captures, and these are six-month-old fawns. They were captured in December of 2022, and here's the survival from six months to 18 months so over the last year. They had captured in 2022 17 cash fawns, and zero of them survived. On the south slope, they had captured 22, 19% of them survived. Wasatch, Manti area, they would captured 30, and 18% of them had survived. As you move further south, survival gets a lot better. They had captured a total of 142 animals. Statewide survival rate was uh, 40%, because as they got down to the Oker Stansberries, it was at 44%. Monroe uh, or San Juan was 53. Monroe, 74. Pine Valley, 72. The other thing that he did note on here, which was really interesting, in Rich County, in the northern part of Utah, they captured 21 fawns. Um, but these fawns were all on areas that they were actively feeding. They had captured these. And survival rate of those fawns was 48%. So feeding does work because Cache and Rich County are side by side and Rich County is a lot colder, has a lot less survival. And so the ones that were on the feed rows, they had 48% survival, which is pretty good. So it goes to show that um, feeding does help in certain situations. And currently this winter has not been a winter, very little snow. We did have cold temperatures, but very little to no snow and so there are plenty of happy deer all right you guys have a great day stay wild